morning, we got some fabulous employment numbers from the Labor Department with the economy adding 304,000 jobs in January despite the government shutdown. It was a blowout, but it's only one number. If you want to get a clear read on the labor market, I always like to hear from Automatic Data Processing, ADP, the nation's largest payroll processor with a big human capital management business. This is a terrific company with a stock that's been roaring. We've been behind it the whole way, especially since ADP did report a terrific quarter on Wednesday, although actually they were pretty humble, if not outright self-deprecating about it. So let's take a closer look with Carlos Rodriguez, the presidency of Automatic Data Processing, to learn more about the quarter and the broader labor market. Mr. Rodriguez, welcome back to Man Money. Good to see you, guys. Have a seat. Thank you. Now, you're the only guy, I have to admit, this whole reporting period where I just said, wow, what a great stop. What a great quarter. Fantastic. You are way too hard on yourself. The first thing you talk about is you were unhappy with the 1% growth for, uh, for your bookings, but everything else was fabulous, and that's why the stock's been flying. Yeah, listen, from an EPS growth standpoint and a margin improvement standpoint, it's really the best we've done in many, many years. That's exactly so, what you said so you'd do when you were here last. Appreciate the opportunity to brag a little bit. It's, you it's definitely a great it. quarter. Now, let me understand something. We have this oddity here where we are hiring a lot of people, and yet a lot of companies I talked to had a really bad December. Could you please try, because you probably know more than anybody in the Labor Department, can you explain that to me? How is it possible that so many companies were bellyaching, things weren't good in December, but there were so many people hired? Well, I mean, it's maybe fear around tariffs, uncertainty, what's going on in the, in the political environment, because our numbers have been pretty consistent. I think every time I talk to you, uh, I think I share what we see in the, uh, in the economy, and I think we've been set, seeing steady growth in employment, right. steady growth in, wage, in wages, which I know is important to, uh, to both of us yes. for the average American. Um, so it's been, it's been good news all along, but I think you've had some of your own contacts telling you things about manufacturing oh, and other things my. that look at maybe this. we don't see. Look, a company, a major American company, uh, Dow DuPont, okay? Uh, terrible, terrible. Yeah. Auto companies, terrible. Every housing company, terrible. It's a very difficult thing to reconcile, but obviously not some... Not in the numbers. Not, not seeing in the not numbers. Not seeing the numbers. It's incredible. Yeah. Now, we don't talk enough about what you've been doing with your professional employment organization. you got to talk about this PEO business. Explain it to people because it is growing like wildfire. It's clearly, I think, the most bankable part of your portfolio. Well, I love that business, Jim, because <sighs> I started in that business. That's how I ended up at ADP. Uh, so it's really a, an outsourcing of the entire HR function. So right. it's a fantastic solution for small and mid-sized companies where we help companies with their health benefits, not just payroll, which is kind of the right. foundation of what we do, but also HR, benefits, workers' compensation, a retirement plan that you typically wouldn't have if you were the small company. So it's really, uh, it's really the way to go if you're a small company. You, it's really tough out there in terms of complying with all the regulation and all the laws. It's tough competing against other companies for talent. And I think a PEO really levels the playing field for you. I'm so glad you mentioned that because I don't know what people understand. A small, medium-sized business, their biggest, we're a great country. I don't want to make this sound critical, hypocritical, but the greatest enemy for a small business size uh, company is that the government could come in and put you out of business. And you don't know, ten, you tend not to know what to do, but we use ADP. Okay, at my restaurants. We Appreciate use ADP. That. Absolutely. And we wouldn't know what to do without you. And all we care about is that somebody comes in and puts us out of business. Yeah. Well, listen, the fact of the matter is, even with a change in tone around regulation, it's tough being an employer. No matter what size you are, if you're a small employer, it's almost impossible to be an employer and stay out of trouble. So I think you, you do have to get help, and I think companies like us are there to help. Now, when a small, medium-sized business comes to you for that, they tend to probably go up and do all the you know, payroll and get everything. You end up get every piece of the business. Yeah, as you know, we go all the way from small companies to large companies right. and all the way from payroll to the full HR outsourcing like we talked about with the, uh, with the PEO. Okay, so how's the country feel to you coming after a... Uh, do you notice a difference just in attitude very quickly if the Fed is geared toward having multiple tightenings, which I like for you because of the cash balance, yeah. but then is a little yeah. bit easy. I think it's more important, frankly, that you have job creation than cash balance. You're, you're dead on. You're dead on, Jim. I think it's not only about job growth, but it's also about having a healthy, strong economy. Right. I think if the Fed, as you've been saying for now several months, if the Fed tightens to the point where everything comes to a halt, right. that's not good for anybody. It's not good for ADP. So, yeah, we like increasing yields, but... Frankly, yields were coming off of such a low that we still got a little gas in the tank with where they are today because our portfolio is laddered. So we still have some gas in the tank in the next couple of years, and we'd be really happy if this results, of the, the Fed pause results in a strong economy that endures here for a couple more years. Oh, absolutely. Now, uh, one last thing. Yeah, we had this government shutdown. There were companies that got extended who weren't part of the government. Is everybody okay? Can they snap back quickly, or do we incur some real damage because this one went on for so long? 
Well, it's a great question because I think this is unprecedented in terms totally. of how long that shutdown lasted. Um, but boy, the economy feels like it has a lot of momentum. When you look at our jobs data and you look at wage growth, uh, it's hard to imagine that this is going to be other than a pothole in, uh, in the road. So I'm very optimistic that things will continue and the momentum will continue. And uh, certainly it's a hope, hope. We hope that for ourselves, but also for everyone else in the economy. OK, so everybody listen at home. If you see those job numbers and you see they're so big like they are 100 straight months, the best way to invest in it is with Carlos Rodriguez, the president and CEO of ADP. Man, money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.